In June of 2018, a developer going by Hunter Long on GitHub pushed the first bits of code for a service called StatPing. Over the next couple of years, until around December of 2020, StatPing was being maintained by Hunter Long and a team of around 30 other contributors. At this point, StatPing remained dormant until about August of 2021, when Adam Boucher forked the repository and began developing and maintaining StatPing-NG. New releases of StatPing-NG were released until around March of 2022, when the service hit version 0.90.80. And at this point, StatPing-NG received no further releases until May of 2023, but the devs have advised not to update to this version just yet. Now, updates and changes to the service are still happening, but at a bit of a slower pace for the time being. Now, if you're not familiar with StatPing or StatPing NG, this is a service page for monitoring your websites and applications with graphs and analytics and all kinds of really good, useful information. Basically, think of this as an alternative to Uptime Kuma with some different options. Now, please don't think of this as me telling you not to use Uptime Kuma. I love that service, but this is just me showing an alternative to that that may be a better option for some people. So let's take a look around Statping NG and then we'll take a look at installing it. Now, with Statping NG, you're going to get a homepage with information about your services, their failures, the response times, uptimes, and graphs showing historical response times so that you can easily see if there are any anomalies that you should focus on. Now, at the bottom of that page, you're going to get access to a dashboard where you can see all of your services listed out with some general information, including events, uptimes, incidents, check ins, and failures. By clicking incidents at the bottom of each of these services, you can create a, basically a note or an announcement letting people know what's going on or what will be going on with that service. <clears throat> with check-ins, you can tell your service to send a GET request to a specified URL in StatPing. You can also use a cron job to accomplish this task, and StatPing NG even gives you the cron job script to configure it. Each time StatPing NG receives a ping from your service, it knows that your service is up and running, and if StatPing NG doesn't receive this message, within the expected time frame, it will alert you that there might be an issue with your service. Now, while check-ins aren't necessary for things to run, they are an additional way of checking on your individual services. Now, going back to the previous page and clicking on failures, you'll see exactly that, failures. It will also tell you how many failures you've had and what it is that failed so you can investigate what's going on. Jumping over to the services menu item across the top of the page, you can create groups for your services, change the order of those groups, and of course, add the services that you want to get notifications about. When you create a new service, you'll enter a few bits of information about that service. For instance, you'll give it a name, and then you'll add what kind of service it is. Basically, is this an HTTP service, a TCP service, a UDP service, etc and you can add the service to a group for easier organization. You'll also add a permalink URL. Basically, this is just a URL slug for Stapping NG, just so that it's easier to get to that if you just want to type the URL out. That's all that is. The public service toggle is to tell the system if you want this service to be published on the public dashboard. And you can tell it how often you'd like to check on the service with the check interval. Next, you're going to enter the endpoint of the service. So this could be a URL or an IP address or, or however you're going to communicate with that service. After that, you'll want to set the timeout so you can set how long StatPing NG should wait before deciding that the service is offline. If you're looking for more information on that, I would definitely check out their docs so that you make sure that you get this exactly right for what your setup happens to be. Lastly, on this page, you can decide if you want to receive notification on the service that you're monitoring. And we will come back and talk about notifications here in just a little bit. The next tab across the top of the page is to create and manage users. You can set usernames and emails and passwords, as well as deciding if the user is an administrator or not. Definitely be careful with who you set as an administrator. At the top of the page, you'll be able to see when each user has last logged in and you can edit the user from there as well. Next, we've got announcements and it's really just as simple as that. You can create global announcements or announcements for individual services that you're monitoring and kind of give people an idea of what's going on or what might be happening in the future. You'll give each announcement a title, a description and set a date range for the announcement. And as I mentioned, you can even set the announcement to notify users ahead of the scheduled time. 
<clears throat> so here we are on the settings page and it looks like it's got a lot going on, but it's really not as bad as it first appears. Uh, basically, you can change the name and the description of your Stapping service. You can also change the URL, enable a CDN, and add footer text to your instance. You can also change the language and send error reports back to the devs to help them keep developing Stapping NG. There's also an API section on this page, so if you need an API key for managing your Stapping instance, you can find that here as well. So looking down the left side of the page, we're gonna find a few more menu items. And the next one down is theme. Now in the theming section, you can completely customize your status page using SAS styling. Also the Statping NG container image already contains a pre-built SAS binary. So you don't even have to do any additional configuration to use SAS to, to style your instance. After themes, we've got authentication and you can use the built-in authentication or you can use a third-party system like GitHub, Google, Slack, or a custom OAuth provider if you wanna go that route. For my setup, I'm just going to use the pre-built uh, authorization system built in. If you want to export and import your settings into a different instance, the import tab is where you'll want to go to get those things taken care of. Next, we've got the configuration page, but when you get there, the page is going to look blank. Uh, at least it did for me. It may not for you, but it did for me. What I had to do was click inside the box and then the text appeared. Uh, and then you could use that section to make a few different changes to your setup. Now, most of the rest of this page is all about setting up notifications, and there are multiple options on this page, including Slack, Mattermost, Command, Discord, SMTP Mail, Line, Telegraph, Twilio, Webhooks, and mobile notifications if you're using the compatible Stapping app. Uh, they've also got Pushover, Email, Gotify, Amazon SNS, and there's also a page of variables that you can use in your notifications if you wanna get detailed information in your communications from Stapping NG. So going back to the top of the page and clicking on logs will show you the logs of your Stapping server. This way you can find any information you may need for troubleshooting or whatever else you, you happen to use logs for. The help menu item across the top of the page will take you to a list of different topics that you can choose from to get more information and even drill down to really refine how to configure different aspects of your Stapping NG configuration. And of course, the last item across the top of the page is just a simple logout link, and that's exactly what it does. So now that we've dug through the application and kind of how different things work, let's take a quick look at installing this via Docker. Now for this setup, for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to go with a simple installation using an SQLite database or a SQLite. I'm not sure how that's actually pronounced, but uh, there are more complex options available in the Statping NG wiki. Now we can use a few different methods of installing this, but we're going to use Dockage. Yes, I'm still calling it Dockage because I was given permission by the developer. Uh, I'm sure it's actually pronounced some other way, but it just doesn't ring right in my head. So Dockage, it remains. Now, if you head over to the Statping ng Docker wiki, you'll find a Docker command that you can deploy Statping with. And any of the options on that page should work, but I'm going to use the mounting volume version. Uh, I'm just going to click the copy icon and head back over to Dockage. Then I'll paste that run command into the Docker run text box and click convert to compose. Now on the new page that loads, I'm going to uh, give the stack a name and make sure the Docker compose on the right side looks good for my configuration. And it's mostly fine, but I do wanna change just a couple of things. First, I'm going to change the port from to something other than 8080. And to do this, we're only going to change the first 8080 on the line with the ports. We don't wanna change the colon or anything after that because that's what the container is looking for inside. Next, I wanna change the volume. Now you could map this to a folder on your system, but there's really nothing that you need to access easily in the application's code. So I'm just going to change this to a Docker volume. And I'll do that by changing the volume line to just be stat ping colon slash app. Again, don't change the colon or the slash app here because that's what the container is looking for inside. If you change that, it's it's not gonna work, it's gonna break. So now that we've got that done, I'm going to go down to the bottom of this Docker Compose after the network line. You could put it before, I'm just gonna put it after. And I'm going to define the Docker volume with a volumes tag and then a new line, couple of spaces, and then stat ping with a colon at the end. Both volumes and stat ping down here need to have that colon at the end or it will throw an error. Once I'm happy with everything that I've got set up here, I'm going to click save and then I'm going to click deploy. And after a moment or two, the container should come up and things should be ready to configure. I know that not everyone is using Dockage or wants to use Dockage. So you can take the same Docker Compose command that we took uh, earlier from the stat ping ng Docker wiki and either deploy it via command line as it is, 
or you can head over to a site like composerize.com and convert the command to a Docker Compose and then deploy it via Portainer or whatever other method you happen to want. So once statping ng is deployed, we can go over to the IP address and the port that we deployed it on. And you'll be asked to fill out the basic information about your setup, including the language, database type, status page name, description, domain, this could be a URL or IP, and the primary admin user account. You can also enter an email address and decide if you want to get notifications about major release updates about Statping NG when the developers happen to have uh, more information about the new updates. After you click save settings, the page will reload and you'll be logged in and there'll be some default data loaded in there already. So you can kind of get an idea of what it might look like just kind of a, as, a, as a jumping off point, if you will. The reality is you're probably just going to delete all of this data and then start entering your own information about your servers, applications, and whatever it is you wanna monitor with Statping NG. If you're looking to help or support Statping NG and the crew behind it, there are a few ways that you can do that. The first and easiest way to do that is to give the project a star on GitHub. At the time of writing this, there are about 996 stars on this repository, and I would love to see if we can blow this up just like we did with Dockage. Also, based on a post that I saw from Adam, the main developer, back in March of 2023, they are looking for maintainers and testers, so you might reach out and see if there's anything that you can do to help them out if you're in a, in a position to do that. And if you'd like to help out the DB Check channel that you're watching here, uh, there are a few different ways that you can do that too. Uh, you could like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to have ad-free access to my content, you can either join my Patreon or become a channel member here on YouTube. We've also got a Discord that you can check out if you wanna chat with other tech enthusiasts. And of course, links to everything that I've talked about in this video will be in the description down below. So I hope that you've enjoyed this look at Statping NG. Be sure to let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Also, as always, and just to kind of reiterate, links to everything will be in the description down there as well. But I think with all of that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do wanna thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.